Hello. I know that you were worried that maybe I wasn't going to show off my festive side. Well, I've got good news for you. I was leading the Easter egg hunt today for uh, some of my younger cousins, and I decided to bring that attire into this conversation, perhaps particularly just to show off my incredibly devilishly good looks, my appeal to any and all seasons, but also maybe to lighten the mood, particularly for Bayern Munich fans, because something happened that made me think of one line. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Now, that's got nothing to do with Easter, obviously, but we'll just go ahead and leave this on for the rest of the thing. I don't know. I think I look great, and that's all that matters, right? Uh, yes, Bayern Munich is not going to win the Bundesliga for the first time in 11 years. And that, that brings a lot of interesting reactions. And uh, I think that some valuable lessons are being learned, particularly by Bayern Munich fans. But let's get into what actually happened. The Der Klassiker is what actually happened. Dortmund beat Bayern Munich 2 to nothing which was a fantastic move by Dortmund. I do love the fact that apparently the only time Dortmund can win this match is when it doesn't matter for Dortmund's title chase. Uh, it reminds me of that scene in, in I, I just recently watched like all of the Marvel movies. Well, not all of them, because that's not physically possible. You'd need three lifetimes to do that. But like, I, I recently finished watching all of the, uh, what are they called? The Avengers movies. Then there's that one stone. I think it's the soul stone that they're trying to find. And there's one guy that leads you to the soul stone. And it's like, I, you know, I can only lead people to it. I can't attain it myself. That's basically what Dortmund has done in this particular situation. Bayer Leverkusen was already 10 points clear of Bayern Munich. This whole situation had already been finished. And Dortmund just decided to stick the final nails in the coffin, which I'm sure felt very good for Dortmund. But they're still in fifth somehow. They, they just haven't really been in touch all season. Granted, nobody's in touch with Leverkusen because if you like let me pull up the standings real quick just to give you an idea here Leverkusen have won 23 of their 27 league matches they have drawn the other four uh, it is an unbelievable season they're putting together there are seven matches left they're 13 points clear that means if Leverkusen wins three of its last seven matches it will be the league champions and as a result you add something that is pretty remarkable Thomas Tuchel in a ma in a race where you know, he's obviously already been fired. He's leaving at the end of the season. But mathematically, they're still alive. He comes out and says, congratulations to Bayer Leverkusen. The title race is over. As much as I'd love to believe this is some sort of mental game to get some sort of complacency into Bayer Leverkusen, I really think that Thomas Tuchel's just kind of given it up. Like, he's given up the game at this stage. Bayern is still in the Champions League. That's what they're going to focus on. That's their opportunity to finally get a win in, 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 in like, a, a single competition not for Bayern obviously but for this man because what really went viral and what I actually really wanted to talk about off of this is this video I'll just go ahead and play it this is Harry Kane after the loss in Der Classic that's deep guttural serious physical pain there I mean I feel that I, I I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straight up here I I clown on Harry Kane and Tottenham all the time I personally as somebody wearing bunny ears in this video, I like making fun of people all the time. I make fun of myself. I, I think it, it's cool to keep it lighthearted. It's cool to make jokes about everything. Makes life easier, probably. And and I and as such, I make fun of Harry Kane a lot, right? There's a lot of easy, obvious Harry Kane jokes about, well, wouldn't it be funny if Tottenham won the league and somehow Bayern didn't win a single trophy? Well, now they're out of DFB Pokal. Right now they are they're not going to win the Bundesliga unless there is an all-time collapse on the way here, right? And and you can see how much this is starting to weigh on him. Cuz I want to be very very clear about something. Harry Kane is one of the best strikers in the history of the game, right? He is not R9, right? I he's not Gerd Müller, right? He's not Messi or Ronaldo, right? He's probably not even Erling Haaland. Although I will make an argument that he plays a more aesthetically pleasing game than Erling Holland most of the time. Uh, but if you're making a list of the top, I'd say, 10 strikers that have ever laced up the boots and played, and we're talking about a guy that scored more goals for England than anybody. We're talking about a guy that's got you know, a couple hundred goals in the Premier League. And it is really hard especially in the modern game where there's so many trophies. You have League Cups, Super Cups, right? But you, of course, have to win another cup to be involved in that unless somebody, like, wins all the cups and then you finish second and you can get in a Super Cup. Uh, Europa League, even Conference League, which, of course, Spurs was in while he was on the team and Spurs found a way to, like, plummet out of that as well. It's really hard to not win a trophy while achieving at the level that Harry Kane has been achieving at. And when you, you can tell that it weighs on him. 
right? And the idea that he's not clutch, I, I always believe there are certain players that are incredibly clutch. They are on another level of, of how clutch they are, right? Where it, Didier Drogba is somebody that comes to mind, scoring in all those cup finals, like people that just are able to elevate their game for, that, for, for those particular moments. They find another gear. But you know what? The vast majority of players, they aren't like that, right? And I, I've got nothing against somebody like Phil Foden. He's, he doesn't strike me as somebody that's like that. I don't know. I, I think Erling Holland is arguably the best player in the world right now. I don't think he's particularly like that. He's just a really good player that scores a lot of goals in a lot of games, but he's not somebody that seems to just absolutely take over in those big moments. I think Kylian Mbappe is actually like that, at least when he's playing for France, right? So the idea that Harry Kane is not him not being somebody that just dominates in the most important matches, that doesn't mean that he doesn't deserve to have won a trophy at some point. Because you know what? Erling Holland still has a bunch of trophies. Phil Foden still has a bunch of trophies. Gabby Jesus has a bunch of trophies, right? And Gabby Jesus is a darn good player. But I'm just uh, like... I'm just saying here, right? You do not have to be Didier Drogba to deserve a trophy. And it is amazing that the level he's played at, as long as he's played, he does not have one uh, at, at any point with any, you know, with any team. He's got the Audi Cup in the preseason, right, with Tottenham. And Bayern Munich always win 11 straight years. It is amazing how long that run is. Like how many teams have won the Premier League in that span? How many, how many different things that have changed in that span? I mean, PSG's lost the league multiple times in that span in France, and that always feels impossible, right? 11 years is an unbelievably long time. When you had Dortmund teams that were capable of getting to a Champions League final, you've got European winners, Eintracht Frankfurt, right? You've got, all, you've got good teams in Germany, but Bayern was always on top of it. And you would think that they'd gotten better, and lo and behold... They run into a Leverkusen team that has dropped eight points in the league all season. All season. Let me show you something. Another reason that I uh, perhaps I feel bad for Harry Kane here, and I do think he will win a trophy at some point. If we look at the table right now, let me see if I can pull this up for you, right? If we look at the standings right now, Bayern Munich's on 60 points with seven matches left. This is what the table looked like last year. Bayern is on pace, I would say, to finish with more points than they did last season. Right, All they have to do is win, I would say, four or five of their last seven in the form they're in right now. That is probably not anywhere close to a guarantee, but it's certainly within reach. It's not like they have to go perfect or anything in order to reach what they reached last year to win the league. Right, Dortmund bottled it on the final day with a draw, and, and Bayern won the league with 71 points. D dude, Leverkusen, with seven matches left, already has 73. Harry Kane, outside of the two matches where they play against Bayer Leverkusen, has no control over that, right? And, and I, it is amazing what they're doing, and I'm so happy for Xabi Alonso, but I just feel bad. I feel very, very bad for Harry Kane because he, does, he doesn't deserve the mountain of slander he's about to get. And I'll be honest, there's a lot of great storylines that can always come out of a Champions League, you know, from, from Arsenal being able to win a Champions League for the first time ever, right? That's still in play. You've got Atletico Madrid still in there, and that would be kind of the crowning achievement for Simeone. There's plenty of Real Madrid returning to the precipice, Manchester City announcing a dynasty. There's so many great storylines in there. But if I had to pick one storyline to be in there, it would be Harry Kane scoring a winning goal in the Champions League final, just to evict all of those demons. It'd be an exorcism at midfield, right? We'd turn it into a terrible horror movie in a couple of years. The experience that he would have, the monkey off his back type of moment that would occur. Because going back to him not being a clutch player, I mean, we're talking about a dude that scored a penalty in the in the World Cup quarterfinal against France. But all everybody remembers is that he got a second one and then happened to miss while going up against somebody that he played with for a decade and definitely knew all of his penalty tendencies, which adds an even higher level of the mind game. This dude stepped up and cashed brilliantly, converted a penalty in a World Cup quarterfinal. He is capable of delivering in big moments, but Bayern Munich looked toast. Thomas Tuchel has admitted defeat in the Champions League quarterfinal is their absolute last hope. He will get a trophy at some point. Right. Or I, you know, I will wear, I, it'd be surprising because the way players retire, like <laughs> he's going to retire 12 years from now, but you can hold me to this. I'll wear these bunny ears for a whole month. If Harry Kane retires without having won, you know, a major trophy league cup and up. All right. And I'm not talking in the Saudi league. I'm talking in Europe. Okay. I'll dust these bunny ears off and I'll, and I'll wear them for a week. Cause I think Harry Kane is going to get that trophy. I think he's going to deserve that trophy. They can't wait for him. But I also said this is this is good character building for Bayern. Because when you've won the league 11 years in a row, 
This is not something you normally have to deal with. Watch this. We've got fans leaving. Fans leaving with five minutes to go in Der Klassiker. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to take the opposite approach here. I'm not, I'm not getting mad at them for leaving. I'm just saying, good. You cannot get everything you want in life. And if you are a 15-year-old Bayern Munich fan, you've won the league every year you can remember. You've also cashed in a Champions League. You've dominated London teams. You've dominated Barcelona over that time. You had Lewandowski, one of the preeminent bagmen of the last 25 years, just slotting goals for the last decade after you stole him from your biggest rival. You've had everything that you wanted. This is a good character-building experience. This is good for the German League. I think it's probably good for Bayern Munich because it's finally proving that their league is actually competitive when you dominate your league as much as they have. You almost don't get as much respect as you deserve for dominating that league because everybody thinks, well, it must just be easy that you keep winning the league for 11 straight years. It's not, right? It, it, it is not, especially in a league that is sending as many teams to European competitions that are doing well in them as the German league. So we get, we're getting some character building, and we're going to find out a lot about Bayern, <laughs> Bayern Munich fans and Bayern Munich's administration and how they handle losing. Because I mentioned in an earlier video, you've got a couple of players that are kind of waiting to see who the new coach is, and apparently it's not going to be Xabi Alonso. So things are about to get spicy. But it is over. It is it, it is over. I'm comfortable declaring that it's over. If it's not, it's an all-time bottle job, and it, that would mean that Bayern Munich has simply the greatest plot armor of all time. But the only team that seems to have the important plot armor right now that team is Bayer Leverkusen because they were, again, losing until the last five minutes before they won to pull ahead 13 points on Bayern Munich. They're untouchable, completely uncatchable, completely unstoppable. And congratulations to Leverkusen. Commiserations to Harry Kane, who will become the absolute butt of every joke for a very long time now. It felt impossible. So <laughs> it felt impossible to go to Bayern Munich and not win a trophy. Kingsley Coman, who plays for Bayern Munich, has won the league every year of his professional career. All it took was Harry Kane to stop it. See, I did get one joke in. Thank you. Thank you. Happy holidays.